Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Well, right now we want to see what the headlines are on our national dailies this morning. Joining us to review the papers is Professor Camilo Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science. Yes. Um, okay, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and uh, thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, okay, let's start to review the papers. We'll start with The Guardian this morning. And um, the major headline here says, Federal government in fiscal dilemma over high inflation, low revenue, and FX crisis. Hmm. Are they? That's the first question. Do you think they're in a dilemma over the inflation, the low revenue, and the FX crisis, but I want to know your thoughts on this because I want to believe that everybody knows and the federal government knows what's happening. Why can they not, you know, try to savage what is left of our economy? But yes, let's hear your thoughts. Yeah, uh, they are in dilemma because uh, in the past six months or so, the government has been so desperate in uh, coming up with uh, policies here and there. And yet, the policies seem to exacerbate uh, the situation. So that is why they are in dilemma. And most of the things that uh, they planned uh, seem to be counterproductive. So uh, take, for example, the issue that the government uh, said that they are not going to... Uh, they are going to reduce uh, dependence on debt. Uh, that was what the Minister of Finance promised. But when the budget came out... Um, it was uh, against what he said. So, and so many other measures. So, I think that is why the government is in dilemma because the policies uh, seem to be generating something different from what has been intended. So, what can they do to ensure that we're not in this state? Um, here, it says that inflation is 28.2%. Our budget is 28.7 trillion naira. So, what do you think the government is supposed to be doing to ensure that we're not here, whereby the FX is going as high as, well, we're looking at dollar as high as 1,200 um, 1, naira to the dollar. And, you know, all of this things, inflation, food, inflation as well. What, what can they do? You see, the, the quick fix and the desperate uh, attempt to address the issue is what is generating uh, this problem. Uh, because, uh, you see, the, the government said they are going to raise uh, public funds. And uh, unfortunately, uh, for us, even some factories, I mean, some manufacturers, uh, foreign investors are leaving the country. And uh, those that remain, I mean, uh, our national ones, maybe for national reason, for patriotic reason, they decided to stay. And yet they scaled down. So I think this is what the government has to look at. Why is it people or companies are running out of the country? Mm. Why is it that uh, despite the measures, inflation is very high? So I think the basic thing is uh, right from the beginning, when the government took that measure of, uh, you know, cutting down subsidy, of, uh, you know, allowing the Naira to find its own value, uh, what is generating this situation. So I think this is where the government has to look into. Uh, six months or seven months into the policies, and uh, we see where we are going. So at least by now, this information should serve as a feedback for the government, and the government should take measures instead of these desperate and quick fix right. measures that we are seeing now. Okay, interesting. Let's move over to another one. Um, Funny enough, Yamgula and I were just talking about this, and it says Tinubu orders probe of Edu humanitarian ministry over 37 billion um, naira, and then there's 535 million naira funds. Uh, well, what are your take? What's your take on this one? You see, my take is that this ministry now is becoming, <laughs> you know, a source of concern for Nigeria. Yes. Before we finish with uh, the the earlier. Uh, problem now there is a new one even though it's taking a different dimension that one you know people are looking at uh, corruption this one they are looking at the potential of corruption mm. because what they are saying is the uh, the minister 
violated the financial regulation. And by violating such regulations, you know, you are making it prone to corruption. So I think, um, I don't know, uh, it, it's worrisome, uh, a ministry that is supposed to be helping others and that uh, people are helping themselves in the <laughs> ministry, literally. So I think um, uh, this is worrisome, and uh, I believe what the president said that he's going, he has ordered uh, that uh, they should look and investigate into the matter. I hope it will not stop to a just investigation. Uh, it hurts to roll if they are found guilty. So unless we do that, the ministry will be a den of corruption like other institutions that we have. When we talk of like an NPC, like this thing, now the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs is past joining the club of, uh, uh, you know, corrupt, uh, dent uh, organization in Nigeria. Hmm. Well, if, if Better Edu is found guilty uh, of everything, maybe if the funds were diverted, um, I'm not talking about passing through a wrong um, channel, but yeah. talking about diversion properly. It would be unfortunate because we've been clamoring for women to be in politics. We've been clamoring for youths to be in politics. He's, she's the youngest mm -hmm. uh, of the ministers, and she's also a woman. And that would be a very bad dent on... Um, uh, the image the, of women. The image of women and youths yes. uh, as well, because she's representing two groups there right. as the, in the Federal Executive Council. Okay, let's move to the next newspaper here is uh, Nature News. And um, Nature News leads with FCTA 19 states hold down Nigeria on open defecation free target. <clears throat> In the southwest, here, Ekiti, Lagos, Ondo, and Oyo are the culprits. In the north central, FCT, Kogi, Kwara, Niger, Nasarawa, and Plateau, Abia is in the uh, southeast, Ebonyi, and Enugu. So basically, the north central has about six states, uh, north, southwest has uh, four states, um, northeast has uh, three states, southeast has three states. North West has two states and South South has two states. Okay, which means some of these geopolitical zones are doing their utmost best to make sure that open defecation target is achieved, but some others are not. My worry is on Lagos State because this is where all the tourists will come first before they go to other places. It's like, you know, it's a melting pot for uh, everybody, whether you're coming from outside Nigeria or you're within Nigeria. Everybody comes to Lagos. Yet, Lagos is part of the culprits, making it difficult to achieve this open defecation target uh, uh, by whatever year that it has been set. What is really wrong? What do you think uh, should be done? Because we need these... Uh, a stoppage of open defecation in our cities at, mo uh, at least if we cannot get it in the villages what is going wrong well i, I think what is wrong is uh, the policy itself um for what reason i doubt these uh, statistics now let's assume it is correct uh, um the, now we go back to the issue of uh, uh, the policies you know, if the government said they are going to address these issues, I will see them hitting the ground doing it. Uh, in most places, in the you know cities, you don't have public conveniences. So where you don't have public conveniences, uh, you are just making it easy uh, for people to you know use uh, open space because after all, one cannot stay. Uh, he was out, uh, you know, easing himself or herself. So I think that is where the uh, the policy is. And secondly, is because we are just using statistics. Like um, you talk of Lagos, but and you say that in Northwest only two states are culprit. I am from Northwest. I am talking to you here in Northwest. But what I know, and I have been around uh, in so many states here. I know this is not uh, real, uh, especially in major uh, cities. Uh, perhaps in rural areas, you know, where you don't have high population, 
Yeah, people, you know, you don't have migrants. Many people will have their own homes to go and uh, eat themselves. But in uh, public places, you see it all over. Uh, on high bridges, under the bridges, the side road, even in markets. Mm -hmm. So I think it is uh, a worrisome issue. And uh, the government needs to do something. And what they need to do is uh, to go back to the old policy. You know, in the past, wherever you have uh, such a high concentration of people, you see that the government will provide uh, public conveniences. And some now are even common commercializing it so they could have it uh, maybe at a very affordable rate so that people can go you know i i don't think uh people want to do it out of uh, wish but i think it's out of necessity so i think that is where the policy has to uh go into i mean look into because it's, it's really worrisome, especially here in Lagos. I, I was shocked that the said North Central had the highest number of uh, these culprits. But uh, I thought Lagos had enough enough of this to, mm -hmm. to, to stand for the entire nation. Because when if you are unfortunate enough to cross a pedestrian bridge, for instance, in Lagos, you will hate to be a Lagosian. Because when you look down at the medians, uh, beautiful medians that um, were created to take water when it rains and all that, uh, you will not find the ground. <laughs> if, if you will not find it, it's like polka dots that are very, very many that it makes it look like it's one color. Mm. And it's really, really bad. It's not good. Uh, if you go to Bega, for instance, where you're just entering Lagos, Lagos. you know, you enter Lagos and the first thing that touches you is the stench that comes from uh, the median of the road. Mm. We, it's, it's so bad. Well, um, right. the, the, there's another story on the same Nature News uh, before we move to another newspaper. Ripples over choice of former oil chief as UN COP29 uh, president designate. So obviously... Uh, someone who has been there on the scene before where may, maybe a lot of people d were not comfortable how he uh, ran the affairs of the oil ministry is now a designated president designate to UN COP29. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah you see, we, we have to be looking at uh, performance before we give such uh, positions. Uh, people who uh, did very bad, or rather there are uh, complaints around them, I, I think we have to uh, look at the other way around. Let's not put uh, politics into consideration, because uh, we have so many competent people. Uh, even though this is uh, a temporary thing, but I think uh, what we need to do is always to uh, put uh, right people in the place, and uh, we shouldn't be putting such controversial people even when they are uh, complain against them. Uh, so I think uh, I, my thought is that uh, since there are abundant uh, qualified people who are less controversial, who are these things, uh, we should look at that uh, not to put the emphasis on uh, political uh, consideration. All right. I want to look at another one here on Nature News before we move over. So it says two energy firms sign one billion dollar gas flaring solutions deal in Nigeria. So when I was doing my research in the first half of 2023, companies flared about 138.7 million metric standard cubic feet of gas. And this is about a 10 percent increase from what was done in 2022. So now we're seeing um, a company, a Nigerian company, signing with a company in China to, you know, just reduce the gas flaring and bring in solutions. What do you think about this? I'm sure you, I want to believe that this is a good um, initiative, and but I want to know what your thoughts are. This is uh, not only good, it's an excellent uh, uh, solution because um, if you go to the oil producing areas, you see gas flaring 24 hours, seven days, and uh, 30 days in, uh, seven days in a week, 30 uh, days in a month, or virtually every day is going on. One, you see how it uh, destroys the environment. 
uh, and also affect the weather. And sadly, uh, it is something that uh, is a financial waste. So I think um, uh, it is better uh, we should look at uh, these issues. And this is a good, uh, uh, it's a right step in the right direction. And uh, besides addressing all these issues, it will also address the issue of, uh, you know, gas, cooking gas that we are having. All, you know, wasting this because the Western countries do not uh, require, they don't need uh, that uh, gas, so we are wasting it. I think we have to look at that one. Uh, it's, it's a good step, and uh, we should see more of it if uh, possible, if we can eliminate it 100%. If not, at least let's target that we eliminate more than 50% of it within a very short uh, period. Okay. Um, so we're going to be reviewing a new paper today. It's, a, it's business, the business NG. And there's one I want to take from here. It says federal government disburses 106 billion naira for 260 road repairs nationwide. Um, so I'm sure you drive in Nigeria and we see how the roads are and they're screaming for maintenance. And I believe that, I, I want to think that one of the culture that we don't really have is the maintenance culture of you know anything in Nigeria. But here we're seeing the federal government disbursing 106 billion naira. What does that even mean? Because most times they are disbursing funds and we're seeing these roads, they're, they're really not even being repaired to standard. That's one or not even being repaired at all. You see, my, most, of, most of our roads are destructed. Uh, because of the uh, poor condition. Uh, Disbursing such a money or huge amount of money can go a long way uh, towards improving the uh, uh, road system. But I think dispersing it and just waiting without uh, proper monitoring, without ensuring that they are put into use, uh, they may just be, uh, you know, a, a means of corruption. So I think um, it's good that the government has uh, airmarked such uh, money, but to me, I think airmarking is just one step. Uh, we have to take measures to ensure that the roads, I mean the monies are used for the purpose they are meant to. Because um, if you go to uh, intercity or interstate roads, you see that some of them for years, uh, they, you know, they have expended a lot of money. And at the end of the budget, like uh, now we are uh, seeing 2024, if care is not taken, uh, 2025, by this time, the money will go and nothing will be seen on the ground. All right. Um, okay. We are a little bit out of time, but let's take this one from the punch. And it says lawmakers budget fresh 30 billion naira for National Assembly renovation. So we're talking about our roads not being fixed, you know, in time or even up to standard. But then they're also um, budgeting a 30 billion naira for renovation. They're not building a new, a new structure. They're not building anything new. This is just for renovation and it is 30 billion naira. What do you think about this? Do you think they're just being um, frivolous with the spending of, of Nigeria's money? Yeah, I think this is part of uh, the wastage and corruption that uh, uh, is bedeviled in that area. Because uh, renovation of uh, that place is becoming almost a routine almost every year or uh, within every, the time of any government there will be renovation. Remember, it was not long ago when uh, about uh, 30-something billion was also said to have been spent on renovation. So I think we have to look at this. They, they are public uh, representative. They, they should be wary of the conditions of Nigerians. Nigerians, uh, you know, are suffering. Uh, the roads are bad. There is inflation. There is hunger. There, is all, there are all sorts of problems facing the ordinary person. Why should the uh, people representative be wasting money I, either on cars or, or uh, renovating the assembly or on a power recreation area or this. Look at what they have earmarked for themselves in the budget in terms of maintaining the National Assembly. 
So I think the National Assembly should be seen as a people's representative, not uh, as a drain on public uh, funds. All right. So this is where we have to wrap up this segment. We want to thank you for coming and reviewing the papers with us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking to Professor Camille Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu State. And we've been reviewing the papers. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us.